Hey class, how you doing? Dr. Petty here, and uh, we're going to be covering the Module 4 Excel assignment from Topic 3 in your um, Halo for this project. So, uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Now, I know we've gone through a few Excel videos that I've made for you, so um, I think you should all be familiar with you know the ribbon layout by now, where things kind of are in here. And, um, you know, knowing that this is a workbook and that, that these are individual worksheets that we're going to be working on. So I'll be reading from the instructions and uh, let's just get started. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to I want to save this document. Right. I, I need to save it as something else. So I'm going to save this just by clicking save as and I'm going to say change this one to a two and I'm going to click save. And it's going to save it right wherever I downloaded it. Now, if you're using a MacBook, it will oftentimes download into your Live 365 online folder and then show you a copy of it. Now, the reason why this is kind of a pain is because when you go to upload the assignment, it's not going, you're not going to be able to find it. So I strongly recommend that you save a copy to your physical desktop on your Macintosh, if you're using a Macintosh. That being said, let's just get into the uh, first steps here and let's get going. So project steps says, Nadia Khalif is the office manager for the Conyers Law Offices in Dallas, Texas. The firm is planning to move its computer network into the cloud so that everyone working on a case can access information at any time and from anywhere. Nadia is in charge of securing a loan to pay for the network transition and asks for your help in creating a loan analysis. Go to the loan payment calculator worksheet and then resize row one to a height of 0.8 or sorry, 8.25 to reduce the blank space at the top of the worksheet. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that first. Let's look at the loan payment and then we have this cell that we kind of have going on right here or this row I should say and um, we're going to resize this row to a height of 8.25 now to do this I'm going to come over here to format I'm going to do row height and I'm going to say 8.25 just like that um, there we go so I've reduced that as you can see it's now, now only at 8.25 and let's go ahead and move to the next step so number two says cell d4 has a defined name which is unnecessary for a cell that will not be used in a formula delete the name for this cell d4 in the worksheet so let's find where d4 is so here's d and here's four so we're in d4 and we need to go ahead and take out the defined name so to do this, we're going to need to click over into the formulas um, area. You're not going to really be able to see this from here without going to formulas. And in here, you're going to see something called a name manager. All right, so this name manager helps us categorize things and define values of names, but we're not going to do that here. So we can see here they've defined a few names, quite possibly for various things that maybe have formulas associated with them, things like that. But here what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to delete this name. We don't need this here. So very good. Once you do that, I'm going to close this and we're all done there. You see the value is still there, but we just took a name dependency out of it. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on. So step number three says Nadia wants to assign names to other cells to help her interpret the loan calculations. In the range D5 through D7, define names based on the values in the range C5 through C7. Define names for the range f5 through f7 based on the values in the range e5 through e7 so let's go ahead and do that now we know that we're, we need to look at our ranges first so in the range d5 through d7 we have this here okay so in this range this is one where we want to uh, define these names based on the values of c5 through c7 so what we're going to do is we're going to go to name manager or we're going to go to define name and we're going to go like this. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look here. Scope comment. Um, kind of come over here. Actually, no, it might be easier to do these one by one. So let's try that. So let's go over here. And I'm going to just click define name. And you can see it already picked up loan amount. And I'm going to come down here, define name. 
rate, click OK, come down here, define name, and term. So as you can see, these have been in fact defined and you can kind of see that here as well. So you can see all our divine names. Now we need to do the same thing over here. So it says um, in cell C5 through C7, oh sorry, uh, define the names for the range F5 through F7, which is here. based on the values in the range E5 through E7 over here. So what we're gonna do is same thing, come over here, name manager. So right now it says F5 is the name, but if we actually come over here and say uh, name manager here, you can see that that actually updates and we can now see those dates or those names being defined here. And you can see that right here. And this is gonna give us um, a list of all of our defined names that are right there. Okay, so we've got our defined name. All right, let's move on. Okay, class, so here for step number four, um, we need to, looks like, use the PB function. Okay, so Nadia needs to calculate the monthly payment for the loan to fund the law firm's transition to the cloud. In cell F5, enter a formula using the PMT function. Insert a negative sign after the equal sign in the formula to display the result as a positive amount. Use defined names for the rate emperor and PV arguments as follows. All right, so let's just stop there and let's go ahead and set up our formula. So in here, we're gonna go um, and sell F5. And we're gonna start with, actually, we're not gonna start with an equal sign this time. We're gonna come up here to financial and we're gonna come down here to PMT. I'm gonna fight, there you are, okay. So this is pretty straightforward. So I mean, the rate argument is divide the rate by 12. So in here, I'm gonna to go to my format because we defined it earlier, and we're gonna divide it by 12. The M per argument, multiply the term by 12. Um, so we're gonna find the term, and we're gonna multiply this by 12. And then finally, for the PB argument, we're going to use the uh, loan amount here as the present value of the loan. Okay, so this already is set up for us. This wizard that comes up is kind of nice and it's showing you right now what this is gonna look like. We have one more thing we need to do here. Now notice this is in the red. We don't want that. What I wanna do here is come into the formula bar and just go ahead and do a minus right there and then I'm gonna hit enter and then close this out and there we are. Okay, moving on to step number five. Nadia wants to calculate the total interest which is the total amount of the payments minus the loan amount. In cell F6, enter a formula without using a function that multiplies 12 by the term and the monthly payment and then subtracts the loan amount to determine the total interest. So this is kind of, um, they didn't really do a really good job of wording this because you need to multiply 12 times the term and then you need to multiply that by the monthly payment. Okay, so the way this reads to me is it wants you to do 12 times the term and then 12 times, but that's not what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna set this up as an equal sign. And we're going to do uh, 12 here. And if you get confused with this, this is actually in your book. I think it's in figure 4-13 actually shows you how to do this if you get lost on here. Um, in the Excel section of your book. But anyway, so we're gonna do 12 and then we're gonna multiply this by the term. Now when we say the term, we're gonna use one of our defined names. Now we're gonna multiply that value by our uh, monthly payment, which is here. And then we're gonna subtract that amount by the actual loan amount. Okay, so if I do this and hit enter, there you'll see uh, we have the total interest of this loan, the monthly payment, and the total loan cost, right? Because this is what you borrowed, and if you pay over 10 years at this rate, at that payment, this is how much you're gonna pay for this loan. You're gonna, you're gonna pay $145,000 for this loan. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, and sell, so, wait. Yes, okay, so in cell F7, enter a formula without using a function that adds the loan amount to the total interest to determine the cost of the loan. All right, and I think we've already kind of done that. So we already have loan amount plus total interest, right? So I mean, that's gonna be our um, 
pretty much basic formula there. So um, again, that what I did here was loan amount, you know, plus the total interest, right? Okay, so we have the loan amount and the total interest. Uh, but if you missed that in an earlier step, I literally went over here. I said equals, um, we're going to say the loan amount. And then I said plus the total interest. And then I just hit enter just like that. And as you can see, that is how I get to that value. All right. Now, step number seven says Nadia wants to compare monthly payments, total interest and total cost for interest rates that vary from 7.725 to 8.075. She has already entered formulas to insert the monthly payment in cell D11, which is right here. OK, so the total interest in cell E11 and the total cost of FFLM based on the range C11 through F26. Create a one variable data table that uses the rate in cell D6 as the column input cell to provide the comparison that Nadia requests. All right, so we're gonna be able to do this by um, first, oh, my formula disappeared out of here. That was strange. Let me go put that back. It's gonna be this plus um, this and then enter very good okay so we want to run an analysis and we want to know like if this were going to be a variability in this interest rate like what would this look like and there's a tool in excel that helps us do this and what we can do is we can you know give it a, a rate and then have it do an analysis for us now that says a single variable well, the variable is the interest rate, and that's the only variable. So we have these other things that are here that are impacted by the variable, but the interest rate affects all of these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this range first because um, I'm not grabbing the headers. I just select the range, and then when I do, I'm going to come over here, select this range. I'm going to come over to the data tab. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff in here, but we're going to be looking at the what if analysis. And I'm going to look at a data table. So our instruction set says to use D6 as the cell reference. So I'm going to select the cell D6. Don't worry about row input cell right now. We're just doing column input cell. And I'm going to click OK. And there you have um, our what if analysis, if you will. If the interest rate were 8.075%, this is how much you would pay versus if it were this much. This is a really good way to figure out, like, if you're doing a loan, a car for yourself. It's really, uh, it's really helpful. So step number eight says, cell D6 includes the rate a bank quoted Nadia for the business loan. And the list of interest rates range 12 through C, uh, C12 through C26. Create a conditional formatting highlight sales rule to highlight the matching rate in green and fill with dark text. Okay, so... Um, you know, I think we're looking at the 7.825 right here. So as you can see, there's maybe a few entries of them. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to the um, what if analysis tool here. Um, no, sorry, not what if analysis. We're going to go to conditional formatting. Um, we're going to do highlight cell rules. And we're going to say uh, duplicate greater than equal to. Let's go equal to. And then we're going to say um what was the rate they provided us over here looking at this they gave us oh yeah they want us to use the eight seven point eight two five so i'm gonna just seven point eight two five percent and we need to change this to green with dark fill text and of course, it probably would have helped if I would have applied it to the row. <laughs> so let me try that one more time. Okay, so uh, highlight cell rules. Um, and then let's just say equal to, and we're going to say 8 point, or 78.25 percent. Make sure we include that in there. And then we want to change this to green with fill text. And this kind of helps us identify. Now, if I were to change this number to any of those, it would also change. Okay, so let's move on to step number nine. Nadia has set up the structure for an amortization schedule in the range LH4 through L15. So let's look at H4 through L15. All right, so here's an amortization schedule, which is payments over time. 
um, H4 through L15, finish the amortization schedule by completing the formula in cell J5, which already contains an if function that checks whether the year in column H is less than or equal to the term in cell D7. Between the, commulas in the, the commas in the formula in cell J5, enter another formula using PV function. Use defined cell names for the rate, emperor, and permanent argues as follows. Okay, so let's go over there and um, let's find that if function that she's got going on over here in, in cell D7. Uh, that's right down here. Or is it not in D7? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. In cell J5. There we go. Okay, so here we have our formula. So she's got an if analysis. And what we're doing is we want this thing to do so. An if is what we call a logical operator. So if and or else statements, for example, are all of those. And that means that if something happens, if a condition is met, then do this. But we have to define what that condition is. So within here, what they're talking about is, see there's two commas. I'm gonna go ahead and just plop that in there real quick. And then it wants us to set up the sum once more in here. So I'm gonna come over here to formula. We're gonna go back to financial. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up with PMT. Okay, so you can see it kind of dropped the PMT in there for us. And then we're gonna set up this rate as they have said. So it says divide the rate by 12. So we're gonna say here is rate divided by 12. Um, here is, um, Emperor, subtract the year value in cell H5 from term. Subtract the year value. Uh, subtract the year value in cell H5 from the term, and then multiply the result by 12 to specify the number of months remaining to pay off the loan. So let's do that. Okay, so in this one, we're going to be using the the PV function and not the payment function. So what we want to do is select this step right here. And you can kind of see in here, there's, uh, looks like one of my wrong formula. I'm gonna get rid of this, just to set it up right for you. Um, what I'm gonna do is, okay, when you click on it, this is what it's gonna look like for you. You wanna click right there in between those um, two commas. And uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna go back to financial and we're gonna go to a PV, we're gonna find it, there it is. So the, this one's gonna be the rate. I can actually just type it in, divide uh, times 12, or di divided by 12, sorry. And then this is going to be, um, this is just going to be subtract the year value from the term. So we're gonna start with term here. And Actually, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the parentheses first because we're going to, we need to do two things. We need to subtract this from here, but then we need to multiply it by 12. So we're subtracting this from H5, cell H5, whatever that date value is. And then we're going to multiply this by 12. Down here, we're just going to go back up into our formula and then specify a monthly payment. Now when I update this, you'll see that it starts to show you what your next balance is going to be. So you might be asking yourself, well then how do we like, get this all the way down through here? Um, well, it says fill the range in step 10, J6 through J14 with the formula in cell J5. So we just need to go through J6 uh, through J14 which is J6 is right here. So what we're, all we're gonna do is just scroll down. We're gonna grab the fill handle here and just bring this all the way down. There you go. And there's our amortization schedule. So as the balance kind of decreases on that, um, yes, yeah, as a negative value. Oh, um, use the monthly payment as a negative value. So we gotta make an adjustment here to our our uh, sheet. So as you can see here in this, we want this to be a negative value. So let's go ahead and adjust that here. So we do that by putting a negative right here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put a negative symbol right in front of the monthly payment. 
And then I'm gonna come over here and hit enter. And as you can see, that's gonna update. So I'm gonna go ahead and just refresh this uh, to turn that black. There we go. So we've got that situated there. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're good. We can move on to the next step. So it says here, the line chart in the range H16 through L33 compares the amount of principal and interest paid each year of the loan. Nadia wants to make the chart more prominent on the worksheet and easier to interpret. Add a border to the chart using the Lavender Accent 1 shade outline color and a one and a half point weight. Add the default data table with legend keys to the chart to show the principal and interest for each year. So what we wanna do is go ahead and just select our chart right here. Um, we really just want this chart though. Okay, so in here you see these are elements that we can add stuff. So let's add the element that they asked for. So they said that they want the legend keys. So let's turn that on. Okay, so we have the legend keys. All right, what else do they want in here? So add the default data table uh, with legend keys to the chart Show the um, to show the principal and interest value for each year. So we got that. So we added this, um, the line chart. So we, Okay, so we want us to um, put a border around here. So that we're going to go to this one right here and or here as well. This can also show us um, what, what data we have and things like that. But let's open this real quick and I'm going to scroll down. And by the way, if I'm not seeing this here, I'm not. And this is kind of giving me a pain. Um, I'm going to just go over here instead and go to chart design. Um, or I can go to format uh, the chart here and I can also go to like shape outline and I can do a border and so we could do a one and a half point border here and as you can see there's a one and a half point I believe that's what it wanted right and then also so you can see we have our one and a half point border And we gotta go ahead and add this so shape outline, and then so, and then we want to have the shape outline. The color we want for this is so. Um, I did double click over here to get this menu open real fast, and I wanted to show you. Let me get back off of that again. When you double click on here, you'll get this format chart area open that op that, that uh, pops open. Um, you see the bucket right here. You have different options here. Um, open up the border and then we're going to go to the color and we want to find the color that they want. I think lavender accent one it was. Lavender accent one, it looks like right there. And then we already have this set to one and a half. And so that should appear there now. So now you see we have our nice little border around our chart. And yet we also need to put the data table in there as well. So that's something we had not done just yet. So to get back to the data table, I can just go over here and hover over it and just turn it on. It's right back in this chart elements thing. We just forgot to check it earlier. So it's right there. And there you have your chart um, all situated here. And it looks like we could just move on to the next step. Okay, so step number 12 says, Nadia was planning to list cost estimates for hardware and software purchases on the cost estimates worksheet, but decided not to. Delete the cost estimates worksheet. So down over here, uh, when you have an extra sheet, it's really simple. We can just right click the sheet and click delete. And it's that simple, it will just go right away just like that. And then uh, for the last step in here, we are going to do some formatting. Go to the retirement projections worksheet. Okay, if necessary, which compares details for the three retirements plan Nadia is evaluating for the law firm. The options show the amount a firm would contribute to an employee's retirement plan per month for 10 years and the monthly rate of return. Nadia wants to determine the future value of the investments for each plan. In cell C10, insert a formula. So let's go to cell C10. Insert, insert a formula with the FV function. So let's go over here to our formulas page, financial, find FV. 
And um, what else do we need to do with this? Uh, that uses the monthly rate of return, cell C6, the number of payments, cell C8, and the number of monthly payments, C cell 7, to calculate the future value of plan 1. Fill the range D10 through E10 with the formula in cell C10 to calculate the future of the value of the plans 2 and 3. So we're going to do this formula and fill this over. So let's just do that. So um, uses the monthly rate of return, cell C6. Uh, M per down here is going to be cell C8. And then finally, payments are going to be uh, C cell 10, C10. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And let's go back. What did we mess up here? So let me go ahead and just clear this value out of here. Let's try that again. So the rate is going to be rate of return cell C6. The number of payments, cell C8. And the monthly payment is going to be C cell 7. Okay. And um, yeah, that should help us calculate the formula plan 1. And there it is. Once we hit OK, we can see we have our value. Now, the only thing we need to do here is use the fill tool to bring this over so that you can see the value of each of the plans. All right, um, so that is it. So we covered some financial functions in here. And as you can see, this assignment is done. It looks like everything is correct on here. Um, I know this is not an easy assignment. So if you find yourself struggling, even with watching the video, don't feel bad. It is a uh, fairly complex formulas that we're dealing with, but as long as you have this looking like this here, you should get a good grade on this assignment. All right, well, thank you and have a wonderful day.